I'm probably going to title this video something pretty clickbaity, like uh, the most underrated novel ever written. And the reason for that is this is a novel written by a very popular author that I just happened to pick up and read, and I am very surprised it doesn't have more recognition and more talk about it than it does in the literary community and within this author's bi um, bibliography. So the novel is Glory by Vladimir Nabokov. So Glory, the premise, we have this young man, his name is Martin, and uh, he has his childhood in Russia, um, but war breaks out and he is forced to flee with his mother on train. Um, and most of his childhood is characterized by traveling. He travels from um, Russia to through all these European cities, Berlin, all these, um, through Crimea, all these areas of uh, Eastern Europe. Um, and that characterizes the early portion of his life. And the rest of the novel follows his progression from this childhood through him being a um, Russian um, immigrant. Is that the right word? Um, he leaves Russia and he kind of struggles with his Russian identity throughout the novel. He struggles um, with fitting in at times. Um, and it follows him through university and through his quest to basically marry this girl that he really loves. So um, my... Um, my reading of Nabokov goes back to the beginning of when I really got interested in reading. Um, I was kind of a reader as a kid. Um, but I really got interested in reading in 2020. And um, I read a few books, like I read uh, Cosmos by Carl Sagan and 1984 and a few of the classics. And um, I had always wanted to read Nabokov, Vladimir Nabokov, even before I decided I wanted, or even before I really was interested in reading at all, I wanted to read some of his novels because I heard about the controversies. I heard about how, how good of a writer he was. It was just an intrigued me in high school. So um, um, I ordered two books on Amazon. I ordered Pale Fire and Panin. And I read Panin. That was my first Vibrant Bokov novel. Absolutely loved it. And this is somebody who doesn't, at the time, wasn't reading anything. And, um, Usually Nabokov is considered kind of high literature, highbrow, but um, really Panin is a great entry point uh, into his um, into his body of work. And it's a great novel. It's short, it's fun, entertaining, and beautifully written. And Pale Fire, of course, is a masterpiece. It kind of blew my mind because, you know, it really redefines what a novel is. It's so unconventionally structured, but so genius. There's so many threads going on through it. And um, then I read Lolita, his most popular and controversial novel. Um, and again, I don't think I liked it as much as the first two I read. And that might just be because I read them first, which my opinion of the book has grown over time. But Lolita was amazing, and it was incredibly written. Um, and I also read his autobiography, Speak Memory, which is incredible. Um, it's definitely the most creative autobiography I've ever read, or biography I've ever read. Um, and probably ever will read. Um, it was very interesting. And a lot of people draw connections with, uh, from Speak Memory to Glory. So Glory was written in his um, Russian phase. This is when he was writing novels in Russian. Um, later in his career, of course, he would end up moving to America. And he wrote like novels like Lolita and um, Ada and a few of the other ones in English. But this was one of the first two novels he wrote. I think it was maybe his fifth, but um, one of his first early novels um, he wrote in Russian. I believe he started writing in the um, in 1930. Uh, so you get a peek into young Nabokov because um, a lot of what I read is his later career. He had really honed the craft of his writing and uh, really uh, perfected it almost. So this was a really nice view of Nabokov uncut um raw, you know, like, um, when he was still figuring things out. And this is not a perfect novel. Um, is it as good as some of the stuff I've read? Probably not. But I still think it is criminally underrated, because I had not heard, I didn't hear anything about this novel. And, um, a lot of Nabokov fans even kind of look over it, really. But what really got me about this book is the language, the prose. Obviously, He's recognized as one of the you know best prose has this, he has some of the best prose of any author out there really I mean his prose is incredible in my opinion 
and this book's no exception. Um, he actually translated this um, later on in his life. The foreword was dated 1970, so that was later on in his career, definitely. Um, him and his son, I believe, helped translate, worked on the translation. Like, his son translated it, and he kind of, like, edited it a bit um, to fit his, um, to fit his, um, tailor to his liking, which is, you know, it's a big deal with Nabokov, because he's very, he was very, you know, strict on getting things how, exactly how he wanted it. He was definitely a perfectionist. Um, but this novel is fascinating with its prose, its descriptions of nature, um, you get so much um, description, a beautiful description of different areas of Europe when he's on that train ride as a child through going on the train throughout city to city and all throughout Eastern Europe. It's so beautiful and described so well. Um, and, you know, like later on in the novel, he becomes a farmhand in France. I mean, you, you feel like you're there. You the, the Russian forests... Um, Cambridge, rainy Cambridge in England, where he eventually attends university. You, you can feel like you're there. I mean, the prose is so rich. It's like whenever you eat like one of those like cheesecakes from the Cheesecake Factory, it's just so sugary and sweet and rich. And it's just like, that's basically his prose. It's, it's definitely not for the minimalists. If you're a fan of minimalism, Raymond Chandler, um, or Ernest Hemingway, if that's more of your cup of tea, you might not like this novel because this is definitely the prose is is he's shooting for the stars of this prose, and and I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely not um, I'm more into flashy prose. I really I'm a sucker for prose like this. Um, when authors are really trying to write beautifully, that's just and and a lot of people like for instance a lot of people you know when something's too sweet or too rich they won't like it because it's just too much. They're oversaturated with it. And maybe the prose is a bit oversaturating at times, but it is absolutely incredible, and it wowed me in several passages. I'd just like to read an example of uh, some of the writing um, early on in the book that ends up being a big player later on in the book. Um, this is the beginning of chapter two. On the bright wall above the narrow crib, with its lateral meshes of white cord and the small icon at its head, lacquered saint's brown face framed in foil, crimson underside plush somewhat eaten by moths or by Martin himself, hung a watercolor depicting a dense forest with a winding path disappearing into its depths. Now one of the English books that his mother used to read to him, how slowly and mysteriously would she pronounce the words, and how wide would she open her eyes when she reached the end of the page, covering it with her small, lightly freckled hand as she asked, and what do you think happened next? There was a story about just such a picture of the path in the woods, right above the head of the little boy, who one fine night, just as he was, nightshirt and all, went from his bed into the picture, onto the path that disappeared into the woods. And then later on it says, When as a youth he recalled the past, he would wonder if one night he had not actually hopped from bed to picture, and if this had not been the beginning of the journey, full of joy and anguish, into which his whole life had turned. He seemed to remember the chilly touch of the ground, the green twilight of the forest, the bends of the trail, which the hump of the great root crossed here and there, the tree trunks flashing by as he ran past them barefoot, and the strange dark hair teeming with fabulous possibilities. And in a way, that picture of the dense forest and the paths um, hanging above his head kind of looms large above his head throughout the rest of his... I don't know if you can say life, but for the rest of the book, at least, for what that covers of his life. Um, as I've said, he always struggles with identity, the past. This is a theme that's reoccurring and reoccurs all the time in Nabokov's novels and work. Um, he struggles with fitting into English society. I mean, he's a star tennis player. He's a star football goalkeeper. He's a, um, a great student at um, uh, Cambridge. He really seems to have a lot going for him, but he's plagued by the memory of his fatherland, um, or motherland, <laughs> Russia, whatever. Um, and he's uh, plagued also by a character in the novel named Sonia. And Sonia is basically his love interest. And throughout the novel, he continuously tries to impress her. He has these interactions with her. And he's just head over heels with this woman. And, or young girl, um, and M Sonia continuously rejects him throughout the novel, and he just can't get over it. He's so heartbroken. He, um, 
he is always making these attempts and it's like you know a reader at times he can seem a bit annoying because it's like move on but um he's really captured by this girl um and there's tons of great characters in the novel as well um you have darwin darwin's probably one of my favorite characters he's um uh he is uh martin the main character's roommate at cambridge and he's pretty funny he is he's pretty he has a lot of funny scenes in the book um but he was one of my favorites uh char character wise um and also one of my favorite he's not in there for very long but um uh, archibald moon who is um, one of martin's um professors he's a russian professor actually at cambridge he's a very eccentric and entertaining character as well so uh, there's definitely some great characters as well there's one guy named Bubnov I believe who's a novelist who um ends up getting in a relationship with Sonia so um, I'll let you read the book and find out how that ends up but he's also a very interesting character he actually um he actually rips off like he like he like get draws inspiration from I guess his life to write his novels and it's kind of funny the way he does it um near the end of the novel the novel is um it's not really based on I, I would say the plot is not really the most important part of the novel actually i think that um i think the language is what really drives it because the plot is not anything that special you know really it's um just the events in this man's life and you could say that maybe towards the end of the novel it the event the plot becomes more important and that sounds crazy to say but um it's almost like a um for at least parts of the novel it's like a exploration of the senses and the human condition i've never read um in search of lost time by marcel proust but i've heard a lot about it and i've read passages from it and this seems like it gives me the same vibes as as that um, work does and it's only 200 pages long so um maybe um maybe when i get around to reading that mon monstrous work i can um confirm or deny whether they're similar works or not but the plot is it's it's not it's not really chained to any ideas it seems like he really had fun writing this novel and um there are themes like um you know like i said the identity um sour love stuff like that but they're not the novel's never changed to that it's it's a very it's written in a very interesting and intriguing way, and I'd say that it's worth reading a 200-page novel just just to get the experience of reading it. Um, but it ultimately all it builds up in Martin's life, and towards the end of the it, towards the end of the novel, he makes um, a pretty big decision that will impact his life, and he kind of builds up for it throughout the whole novel. He kind of builds up for this one moment in the novel, and um, is the ending satisfying? I don't know. It is it is kind of a cliffhanger. Um, you'll have to read it yourself and find out. But it does have a novel that could be... The in, novel does have an ending that could be described as maybe not completely satisfactory, but I like it the way it is. I also like to read the part from the novel that um, shows the great prose, but it also is a more philosophical part of the novel. And, so, and this is um, near the end of the novel, and Martin is, you know, on the train ride as he usually does. And this is just the thought that comes through his mind and the philosophical meditation he has. At such times, the thought of death, the thought that sometime, maybe soon, who could know, he would be compelled to surrender and go through what billions and trillions of humans had gone through before them, before him. This thought of an inevitable death accessible to everyone troubled him but slightly. It gained strength only toward evening, and with the coming of night would sometimes swell to monstrous dimensions. The custom of performing executions at dawn seemed charitable to Martin. May the Lord permit it to happen in the morning when the man has control over himself, clears his throat, smiles, and stands straight, spreading his arms. So that's one of the great philosophical meditations in the novel. Um, and just a demonstration of his mastery of language and you really have to read the whole thing to get a feel for the prose and how wonderful it is. I've only read a few passages that demonstrate it. There are probably better passages that would, but those are just two that stood out to me. So, um, uh, my final thoughts on the novel um, is that it is very underrated. Um, I'm very surprised that it's not talked about more, especially within the Bokov's bibliography. 
Um, it, I was thoroughly entertained by it. Um, and I really enjoyed reading it. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the portrayal of an area of the world I've never been before. Um, you know, like you almost feel like you're there with that train on with him as he um, as he escapes Russia. And it's a great coming of age novel. Um, so if you're in the mood for a short but, you know, sometimes tedious novel, you know, something that's short but it has prose that you have to work out sometimes and really read, um, I definitely recommend it. If you're a fan of Nabokov and you haven't read it, you definitely have to read it because at least within the realm of Nabokov, it might be one of his most underrated novels. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you've read Glory, please leave a comment, tell me what you thought of it, um, and tell me what your favorite Nabokov novel is. Um, he's definitely one of my favorite novelists, and I can't wait to read more of him. I'm, I have Ada and Night Nay, or what is it? Is it King, Queen, Knave? Yeah, King, Queen, Knave and Ada are sitting on my shelf. I'm probably going to read Ada next. I've heard that's a divisive one, but really good for a lot of people. So um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave a, feel free to leave a comment, and thank you.